But then as he progresses and he starts exposing himself to the finer things in life at like a hyper accelerated speed, he starts thinking that like, oh, now I get like a Ferrari as a gift and I'm like, I don't even f-ing care. You know, he has like a personal chef. He has this, he goes traveling. And that's like the stuff he needs just to be at baseline now. And anything worse than that, his life is like terrible. It really quickly, I just want to finish about the addiction. I just want to mention that the idea that I also came to a conclusion through my life of uh, trying these things. And, you know, I was actually studying happiness in, in grad school formally mm-hmm. at some point. You know, I was going to I was accepted to do a Ph.D. in happiness research. So I was like obsessed with how can I live the happiest life possible? Right. So po- at some point, I actually started to think that the best way to live a happy life was to be secure financially. And to literally have as much happiness in the moment, hedonic pleasure, cumulatively over your life. I thought happiness is a cumulative summation of your hedonism through time. So little did I realize that every time you go and do something hedonistic, including music, including sex, including everything else, you are on a hedon- what's called a hedonic treadmill, which is what we called it in grad school. Hedonic treadmill being... Every time you get a little bit more happiness, it's harder to get a bit more happy from yeah, that. You thing. need to raise, raise the bar. So what I realized at some point was to pursue my own happiness was not really to go party with some friends and have, have some uh, memorable moments. I have tons of memorable mo- moments, bro. They don't make me happy. It's, I can think about them. I get nostalgic. I don't get happy. I miss the days. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, those are good. But it's not like I'm sitting, walking around. I'm like, oh, remember that time I went clubbing and did this and that? No, or you don't, or that time I traveled with these friends. And you don't, you don't live happily because of that. You, so what I realized was pursuing memories and pursuing hedonic pleasure didn't add much to my well-being. But my well-being came from like family, ethics, long-term friendships, um, living for meaning. Like these things made me actually happy. Whereas like I can go get really happy if I go do some drug or something like that or party or whatever. He don't, he didn't stick or have an orgy or whatever, but it won't mean much You're for married. me two days later. Yeah, I can't do that obviously now, but what I mean is <laughs> two, days later, two days later, I won't be that much happier. You know? it, no. it won't really affect me. You see what I mean? It and like, it's just uh, more- there's this uh, thing that I always bring up as an example of the hedonic treadmill or whatever it's called is, uh, this clip I saw on the Joe Rogan podcast like years ago was, uh, do you know who Dan Bilzerian is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he, 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 he was running on that thing. Yeah. So he, <laughs> if you guys know, he's talking part, on the treadmill. <laughs> he was, he was like, you know, a rich guy at a young age and had everything, you know, set up for him where he just had, you know, ridiculous extravagant parties, traveling, blah, blah, blah. And he said to Joe that when he was a teenager getting a, ford mustang would have put him like happiness level wise it was like his dream car and a mustang is like you know relative to an actual like supercar or something is it's like an affordable nice car i guess is how i would put it and he says when he's a teenager that car would have put him at like a 10 out of 10 in happiness but then as he progresses and he starts exposing himself to the finer things in life at like a hyper accelerated speed he starts thinking that like, oh, now I get like a Ferrari as a gift. And I'm like, I don't even fucking care. You know, he has like a personal chef. He has this, he goes traveling. And that's like the stuff he needs just to be at baseline now. And anything worse than that, his life is like terrible. So his hedonic treadmill is like, you're just fucking like full blown, like 10 out of 10 speed. And like the littlest thing in your life goes wrong. And it's like all crashed around you. So it almost, it almost makes you feel that you should almost like spread out your success and enjoy it. It's kind of like, mm-hmm. exactly. it's almost like what I gathered from it from somebody who's very goal oriented in a not materialistic aspect, but I do very much look at financial metrics as a way of gauging success. So for me, I'm like, I'm not saying I'm like trying to work slower, but I'm like trying to like be far more aware of the progress as it's going rather than just like, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but it seems try, like people try, try this because everybody does their financials at the end of the month, right? Take a two day break before you do your financials. Why? <laughs> because then <laughs> like normally you're working your way up to your finance and you know how it's going to end up. Right. And you're uh-huh. it's like a race to the end of the month statement, right? I did better than the month pre- previous by X amount of percent. Right. So my right. business is growing. Now, if you take a little break, <laughs> even if you, 
Derek's problem yeah. is he's looking at the computer every five minutes. It's not even yeah. about the end of the no, month. No, I, I try to make it clear. <laughs> like, to wait him a minute. That, you know, <laughs> dude, it's, YouTube like, views too. Another great example of the hedonic treadmill. Like, yeah. whereas when we, let's say a year ago, I would have been like, a video gets ten thousand views. I would have been like, that's pretty fucking good. Now, if I get less than you know eighty, ninety thousand views on a video, I'm like, what did I do wrong? Like I <laughs> fucked up today. Yeah, I have to find something way more viral than this. You know, and, and that's only, like a terrible, shitty mindset to get into. If it's like your entire like, it's not like I'm I'm very aware of it though, which is good. But at the same time, you really fall into that hedonic trap of being like something that five years ago you would have been like, "There's no fucking way I'm ever going to be at this level," but now it's your baseline. So anything worse than that, you're like, "Life sucks right now," and that's a that's terrible. You need to thing take a step to back into. sometimes. That's why you need to take a step back and just kind of observe from a distance. But it's you know it's very difficult when you're on a roll and every day you contribute to your business and your success or your aspirations or your goals. Every day contributes. Like I understand. Like if I take a day for one break, you you lose. You're basically losing financials and your you know your full steam going ahead with your business but sometimes it's required to get some sort of satisf satisfaction out of it because you're not you're not even living in the moment anymore yeah but but so so let's look at some things from evidence so we know that in happiness research people who win a uh, lottery uh their happiness i'm not talking about their money but their happiness everyone says they lose their money in two years that's true well, it's actually convenient. That's the same time frame, but um, they gain. So they gain the money. Their happiness above baseline shoots up. So it's out of ten, they say their happiness level used to be six. Now it's nine, and it stays like that. And it slowly declines for about two years and returns to baseline. If somebody loses their legs, becomes a paraplegic, they go down below baseline for about two years, then they return to baseline. Wow. If somebody gets divorced, they go down below baseline almost as much as a paraplegic. And then they go back about two to three years, then they stay below baseline and on average never return back to baseline. So there are certain events in life that change you. And then there are certain events that you adapt both upwards and downwards. And the theory of how you adapt to it is by salience. So when you're used to things around you, they don't surprise you. And whatever is salient to you. So Derek, what's salient to you now is this is unusually low. Before, you weren't getting a video that was 50 views. If you did, you would feel the same way as you do now. It's really about the salience of everything, right? Yeah. That's why it's good to take a step back too, sometimes, like, but it's hard. It's, it seems insane, but like the happiness level, like the Dan Bilzerian thing, like as far as how relevant it is to where I'm at, it's definitely true. Because for me, my happiness level on a video getting 100,000 views now is the same exact happiness level as I used to get on... 5,000 to 10,000 views, not that long ago, you know? Mm. So me no. getting mm. like a thousand subscribers equates to now like 10,000 in the mm. same time frame, but the exact same level of happiness equation. Mm. So. I, I haven't actually seen, uh, I haven't talked to people about this that made a lot of money myself. So I've never heard people talk about it, but what I have noticed is that every, cause you're, we're talking about views now, but we're, we're also talking about career, right? So yeah. what I have noticed, though, is that everybody I've ever met that was extremely successful didn't enjoy their wealth much. Like, yeah. I've never met anybody like all those basketball players and that stuff. Everybody I know that was like that went broke. Yeah. They all go broke eventually, like Mike Tyson. They all eventually go broke. Like, that's an yeah, extreme it's, example. It's but the overcompensation spending more than you earn, you know? Yeah, like, to some why... degree. Like, like it, it doesn't seem obvious. Like, right now, you wouldn't think, oh, Kanye could go broke one day. But if you check out the rock stars from the 70s, there's a bunch of them that you would have never thought were broke, and they are broke now. Like, yeah. it eventually, you can't just live for the result. You got to live for the process. Otherwise, the result will be fleeting. Yeah, it's really hard to live for the process, though, until after you finish, like you beat a video game, for example, and then you're like, well, I'm done now. Yeah, and but that, but but it, but if you do that, then you but, that, but OK, so I'm not going to try to give you advice because obviously you, you, may, you may be different than me and everything like that. But but my theory is this. I think that if you are living in that kind of way where the video game itself isn't fun, you just want to beat it then you're going to have to eventually become hedonistic or do things like that. Mm. And I don't think that's a, there has to be some element of the process where you create it in such a way, like right now, maybe for example, just to be realistic, you're pressured by the idea of having to make two videos a day. I bet you, if you're making one video a day, you'd be less pressured by time and you'd actually enjoy the process a little bit more like things, just small things like that. Or for example, 
I'm not. We you know, say that as I'm about to clip like 30 fucking videos out of this exact podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 really. So I don't know. I don't know what it would be because obviously you're doing what you love. It must just yeah. be the process of how you're doing it that's making you yeah. want to. I do love to rush. The, what I'm the, building towards the journey. too. Yeah, I'm trying to be like very cognizant of the journey, and it's like sometimes hard though because the days they blur into each other so much when you're mm. doing like this much shit. And then you'll be like, holy hell, it's been like six months. And I don't really even remember the process. Like you're yeah. not really living through it. You're just kind of like full steam ahead, blurring through it. Okay, well, we so again, again, take a step back and observe from a distance and appreciate what you've accomplished. And you can do that every month. Yes, and it's you cl hard. close it off with your. It, I know it's very hard, you but can't it, just consciously it, just I, okay. It's like telling you someone can, to but you just have happy. to learn how to do it. I mean, I do, it every, <laughs> I do it every month. I take a little step back and I observe what's going on. You know, and and not yeah, only the financials and the business, a, the mindset. You have a different mindset from those. No, it takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. But it, it's but, something you have to learn. Yeah, and but then you appreciate what you have, and instead of going full steam ahead, okay, maybe it inhibits success to a certain extent. But how much money do you really need? It's not about like, money; it's about success. Reach, but we but all the reach thing financial is, there, success at one point, right? And then what can you do? You can raise the bar. You go from a million to ten million to hundred million to a billion. No, he wants to change the world. He wants to. Of I, course, he wants to change the world, and really, but, that's what we all want to do. We want to change the world for hmm. a better, in a better way, in a little bit, and we want to leave our mark a bit. But what I was saying is this, though, Derek. You might not be noticing it, but I tell you something, I've only known you for like a year or something like that now, but I've been yeah. watching you and Lucy's been watching you and Steve's been watching you and we've seen your, it's, it's been incredible to, I, to watch you. And also to be honest, you raised us up with you as well. And just to see the, the dramatic change. Remember that at the time a year and a half ago, when I heard about you originally, I was like, who's this channel? This, I didn't know anything about it. I opened the channel. I'm like, this is the best quality information I've ever seen on steroids in the discussion ever. And to go from you had 150 at the time, I think when I first saw your channel or 200 less than that. Something like April it was quite 1st, low. April 1st last year, I hit 100. Yes, yeah, yeah, it was it was quite low. So then from there to now, it's incredible, brother. Yeah. So even if you don't take account of it, you should hear us or other other of your friends say it. So you notice you're on your way, you're making progress and it's from your hard work. It's not by luck or anything like that. And it's because you deserve it. And is and you're leaving I'm not just saying this because you're my friend, but genuinely, you're leaving the world a better place a little bit. Like even mm -hmm. that video, yeah. that video, that these videos you made on the, the recent ones, the Chef Rush or on, on uh, JP, uh, uh, Jordan, Jordan Peters, those things minorly, but hugely educate people. You know, if I had valuable. those things when I was 17, yeah. my knowledge would be way different now. So I can only imagine yeah. the next generation that grows up with your videos, who yeah. I get consultations with all the time. And I'm so impressed by these individuals. They're so astute. And, uh, and technically adapt because of, mm. that. So, you know, yeah. enjoy it. No, yeah. it's, it's very, very, very valuable content. And you're the biggest guy out there right now that is doing this kind of information. And we're kind of following in your footsteps. Uh, but, the, you know, nobody's raising the bar also. Of the, of yeah, the I was raising the bar. Yeah. And, and of, of course, there's a lot of knowledgeable people out there, but nobody has the desire to really put the information forward. Again, putting it all behind paywalls. And I was the same guy, you know, with this Facebook group. And then I had a discussion with Derek and he's like, just put it out there on YouTube. And you know, everything he, he said came to fruition, you know. Um, that's so true. It's, but, but we have to give credit, Derek credit for one thing, though. He's, he's, he's the first person ever to review studies properly in this subject area and discuss it. More than one study and discuss mm. receptors and molecular mechanisms. I was shocked when I first saw the channel by how the quality level, how it set the bar up, you know, it's so anyway, yeah, we, I just wanted to compliment you a little bit. You should be very proud of yourself. And, mm -hmm. and like Absolutely. he said, you should take a break if you can. I don't know how you're going to do it, but take a break yeah. and, and look back. Yeah, they're all, I, 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 I'll roll, at the, roll out the carpet for you uh, if you ever uh, make a trip here. Oh, I'll give you a life changing experience. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, not, not, in a hedonist, not in a hedonistic way, but it, like Derek, which countries have you visited so far? Besides Canada, um, and the States. U.S., Germany, and I think that's it. Okay, yeah, yeah it's Asia is, Asia is Asia uh, is a completely different planet sometimes. And if you really take the time to go somewhere like Bhutan, Mongolia, Tibet, I know it's so far beyond what you're trying to accomplish, but it's you you get experiences in life that you can never get anywhere else. And and unfortunately, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, a little bit to experience new things and uh, it might mean that maybe it's better to reach all your goals first and then do that 
but then again, goals, like with everybody, we all raise our goals every month anyway. So we'll never attain what we really want because we keep raising the bar for ourselves. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That is, And, and that makes it very, very because I, I thought, you know, I'll be happy with 25,000 subs. You know, and I'm there and no. I'm like, okay, 100. No, 100 K. No, I just, just want to keep going, right? 100 K, yeah. right? I'm and, very and happy. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I am actually, no. honestly, I'm very happy. Right, no, no, like I'm, like, but I've done so much stuff in my life already that, that, uh, that I wanted to get out. Like for me, the, the only thing I really want to accomplish is kids. You know, so I'm very happy for you, uh, Leo, that you're already on this path. I picked the name. I picked oh, the name. wow. I can't tell you. I'll tell you guys privately. Yeah, okay, you guys. sure, sure, sure. The wife sure, has sure. to fully approve before I can say, yeah. Okay, but, uh, right. So, but there's always goals in life, right? And you have financial goals and, and intellectual goals and, and partner goals. And, and uh, Derek, hopefully at one point, you'll get that partner goal as well. Uh, you know, I'm sure you're still sampling. <laughs> but um, Researching. Researching, Researching. right, right, right. And, and you know, at one, you'll reach all these goals, but then you should also accept and be happy with that goal. And that's very difficult. That's probably the most difficult when you attain a goal and you just in the moment you revel in it and you enjoy it. Not to a point that it's hedonistic, but do you actually reflect back on what it took to get there and just appreciate what you've built? Uh, and well, it's very, very hard. I know. So I have one suggestion, Derek. There's a book called, or I think it's called uh, Flourishing or Happiness by Martin Seligman. Martin Seligman is a professor from Harvard who uh, developed this concept in happiness economics called the concept of flourishing, which we observe in humans, but we don't know exactly what it is. It's a complex thing where somebody does something they love doing. Like for example, say you love knitting. So you like to knit. So you find a job in which you knit, and then you find a job in which you knit. And over time, you have a long-term goal. I want to create a large knitting company. And you have many goals along the way, and you actually enjoy knitting as well as the management of the employees. So you find a career that you enjoy the process. You have many goals and you have a long-term goal. You should never reach your long-term goal. That's not the point. If you ever get there, you will feel horrible. Your goal is actually <laughs> to be moving along between the spots, enjoying the process. And the process of flourishing is when you get the recognition of the success. As you succeed and you keep enjoying the process, people experience this overwhelming glow and happiness in their lives. It comes when you find the right niche, the process, the goal. Yeah. And, yeah. It sounds mm. exactly like what I was thinking earlier, where I said you like have something, but you like drag it way out, like mm. all throughout your life. And then you enjoy the full thing, but you never actually really get there. Yeah. And then there are many goals that you see. Exactly. That's sort of exactly that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about yeah. let's talk about this um this MK six seven seven alternative. What's it called? M Mika uh, Mackie Morellin. Uh, 